I've got a problem. As an editor right now, I feel like I either have to choose between easy to make captions that don't really look that good, in my opinion, and two really great looking captions that I make by hand, but take forever to make. Yo guys, what is going on? Jake Felzine back at it. Welcome back to the channel where we are about all things editing. A little bit of dad vibes, a lot of nerdiness. That's, that's what we're about here. If that interests you, definitely consider subscribing, trying to hit 10K this year. Okay, so today, I think I have finally thought of a way where I can get the best of both worlds where I can have really fun, really smooth looking animated pop-up captions like this. Jake make some pop-up captions that look delicious, but then also have it be super easy. Now for a little bit of context, I use Final Cut and DaVinci and I've never touched CapCut to this day. It's not because I don't want to, but I'm saving it for another video and I want to be able to react fresh. I've heard CapCut's incredible. Don't worry, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there, but if you guys don't know me, I'm all Final Cut and DaVinci, that's that's what I use. Those are my two babies. And really right now for me, DaVinci has the ability to make captions really easily, but they just kind of hard cut from word to word on the screen, which is great, but like, you know, we could definitely spice it up a lot more. Versus in Final Cut, I love to use a plugin called Add Motion, which just makes really, really smooth, snappy, pop-up animations, they just look so good. I'm not sponsored by them, this is just genuinely like the one plugin that I've loved ever since buying it. But add motions and captions are like a match made in heaven. But when you do it in Final Cut, <laughs> You gotta type those things yourself, which sucks. It sucks so bad. But as I was doing the dishes last night, I had this idea, was it the dishes or was it the shower? Kinda got to thinking about a really janky, but in my opinion, elegant solution that might allow us to basically get the best of both worlds. I'm gonna pull up Final Cut and DaVinci today and we're going to test it because I think it might be my new favorite way of doing captions if it works how I'm envisioning it. So let's open up those apps. Is it weird to find someone on the internet who loves two NLEs so much? Like I love Final Cut, I love DaVinci, I love them both. You never hear that. Do you ever hear that? I never hear that. All right, so this project that I have here is cut up and made so far. It doesn't have captions yet, but this is a short that I'm making for Zach's uh, podcast that him and I did. If you guys haven't watched that video, you know what to do. Talk to Zach Mayfield, who used to edit for Matt Diavella, ran Kino Tika for a while. He's an insane editor. Insane. And he came on the show and talked to me for a whole hour, let me pick his brains about like all the things that they did for editing. So definitely go check out that video. It was super cool to get to meet him and talk with him. But this is just a little vertical that I wanted to make. Again, I try to make cut up versions of the podcast to promote it. And also it's just fun to make little bite-sized videos. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to take this video, which again is ready to go in Final Cut. It's got music, it's got all the audio, it's got all of the graphics that I want, and I am going to export this project. Let's export it as Testy Baby, because why not? And basically what I'm thinking here is if I export this project, bring it into DaVinci Resolve, I can then generate the captions without having to type them up manually. And then from there, I could round trip it back. Let's crack into DaVinci Resolve, an absolutely delicious piece of software. And we're gonna generate those captions. Testy baby stupid. Let me find that file. We're gonna throw testy baby in here. So now that we have the project open, we dropped this in. We're on the cut page. Let's go to the edit page. Let's expand that. Yeah, I can see audio. Everything looks good. To generate captions in DaVinci Resolve, we just go up to timeline and create subtitles from audio. I usually do about 10 characters per line, keeps it at about roughly, you know, very readable, fast paced captions, which for TikTok seems to be pretty, pretty good. So it's gonna analyze and create all the captions and look at that. So these look boring, these suck. Also, <laughs> Diavellos, Matt Diavellos, Diavellos. Uh, let's change that to Diavellas. So at this point, I think all of the captions look correct, which is great. Now what I wanna do is actually go to the caption track itself and customize this. So I've been a real big fan of Wake lately, which is something that I stole from Patrick Tommaso. Uh, he loves this font and now I do too, because you know, it looks awesome. We're gonna do a drop shadow with like no blur, 
very visible because I think that's going to look the best with what we're trying to do here. Zoom, I think I'm going to raise them up for sure. Uh, we're going to go to the size and increase the size. Let's see how this looks for all of these. Yeah, that looks like a good size. That looks good. So now at this point, this is where it gets really weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my effects and I'm going to use one called solid color. I'm going to drop that on top of the existing video clip. Make sure it lines up and I'm going to make sure that this is bright. Line, actually, we're going to do spring green. Oh, I realized we are in horizontal, not vertical. Uh, to fix that, just go to the cut page, do this drop down, hit portrait, you're good to go. So at this point, we have all of our captions generated and they're typed out. We didn't have to do anything. And now we put a green screen behind the text. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this, but um, I think it's going to be so slick. Let's go over to the deliver page. Let's do a render of this. We're going to make sure that our subtitle settings, that we export those subtitles and burn them into the video. This is important. Add to render queue and render all. I'm going to drop that into my timeline and we still have, as we can see, the audio for both of these, which we don't want. So let's just turn that down. And then here's where I think the magic is gonna get Pretty magical. We're going to go over to effects. We're going to go to add motion and we're going to get this pop effect. Now I love this effect, but it looks terrible out of the gate. We need to really make sure that the duration is super quick. We need to set the curve to snagged, which I think looks really good. So now to get rid of the green screen, we go to masks and keying, green screen keyer, drag it onto this clip and it automatically pulls off the key super quick, super easy. It's very intuitive. So now we can see frame by frame that matte pops in. Now the cool thing about add motion and the thing that I love so much about it is that it always happens from the beginning of the clip. The math happens behind the scenes. There's no sort of like weird key framing going on. It's there from the beginning of the clip every time and all of the math on the sliders is done from the beginning. So what I'm thinking will work is if I go over here and turn on my blade tool by hitting B, is that if I basically go through this and go from Matt to Diavella and then go back to where Matt shows up and make a cut, we should get the really cool cap cut animated captions that I love and I didn't have to type it. So now we're just gonna go down to Diavella's and then we're gonna go frame by frame until we get to former, and then go back to where Diavella shows up and we're gonna make a cut. And then from former, we're gonna go to editor, go back, make a cut. Editor to came on, make a cut. Came on to the show, back, make a cut. And now I believe, again, if we watch this back, Come on. I'll be here all week, baby. Yes. That actually worked way better than I thought it was going to work. That looks so good. And that's so easy because he, ah, again, it's still kind of painful. You still got to use the blade tool and like go through and make all of these cuts. But because in Final Cut, you have the secondary cursor, which is amazing. You basically can just quickly go through and just like cut, 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 make all of the cuts and then you're done and you have these really nice animated captions that you didn't have to type in. And if you just wait until the end when you're done with your you know, cut of whatever you're working on and do this at the very end, it works seamlessly. It looks so, so good. Oh, I'm pumped. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much all I had for today. I come from an engineering background. I got my degree in computer science. I love this kind of stuff, right? Like I love creative work and I love automating things that suck and typing up captions sucks it absolutely sucks but having really nice little animations creatively like gets me going thanks for watching please consider subscribing if you want to support the channel even more there is a membership button down there um big plans this year to try to do more tutorial content that's like really in depth um but also again just a great way to support me and what i love doing um, so if you guys want to hit that, that would be truly appreciated. And again, we do interviews, we do editing, you know, that's, we are all things editing right now. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you are along and signed up for the ride. And I will catch you guys in the next video.